Which brings me to Karrion Cross. It's bad enough they did what they did to Keith Lee on this show. He wasn't the only NXT champion book like shit on this show. They managed to do it in back-to-back -back matches. Very impressive. They aired a series of vignettes for the reigning NXT champion Karrion Cross, teasing his debut, making his raw debut on this show. I already feared for this man the moment I saw they had him wrestling on main event without Scarlet and without the entrance that was such a big part of his presentation on NXT. Why strip that away? Why fix what is not broken? But it was main event, so maybe it was just a dry run and on TV, they'll give him the NXT presentation. Nope. They stripped it all away. Imagine if there was an NXT in 1990 and Mark Calloway finally found a gimmick that worked for him. Because that happens a lot. A lot of guys go to developmental. They have to find themselves. They have to. They just have to hit on that right character. Tyler Breeze spent like five years in developmental. Was on the verge of being cut before he came up with that whole character. And look at the career he ended up having before he finally got cut this year. It takes guys a while to find themselves. If you had Mark Calloway, or let's say Mean Mark is not getting the job done. But he starts dressing like The Undertaker. They put Paul Bearer with him as his manager. He carries around the urn that he draws power from. Maybe his parents' ashes are in there. Whatever. They've got the smoke machine going for his entrance. He looks like a star. And then one day, he gets the call. He gets the call that every wrestler waits for. He's been booked for the Superstars taping. That week in Poughkeepsie. Only when he gets to the building, there's no smoke machine. There's no Paul Bearer. There's no urn. They've completely stripped away all the elements that made The Undertaker work. And then, on top of all of that, they book him in his very first match to be rolled up and pinned by fucking Hillbilly Jim. If these people booked television back then the way they do now, they would have been lucky to have any stars outside of Hogan and Andre. Those would have been the only two. Maybe Savage. You throw him in there. Because how do you fuck up Randy Savage, right? They would have been lucky to have anybody beyond those three. They book Karrion Cross on this show against Jeff Hardy in his very first match. The same Jeff Hardy who lost to Veer on main event a few weeks ago. All the people who don't watch Raw anymore are sitting there asking, what's a fucking Veer? Don't worry about it. It's not important right now. The same Jeff Hardy who couldn't buy time on this show if he offered to pay for it like a like an infomercial. He shows up with his feet on the ropes for leverage. He pins the NXT champion in less than two minutes in his very first match. The first loss of Karrion Cross's WWE career. And you can't say, well, it's NXT, so it doesn't count. You don't get to say that. When they brought Asuka to TV and they built a storyline around her undefeated streak when Charlotte ended it at WrestleMania. So don't give me that shit where, oh, they don't acknowledge what happens in NXT. It's like a totally different universe. They acknowledge it when they want to. When it's convenient for them to acknowledge it, they acknowledge it. When they want to ignore it, they stick their fingers in their ears and they pretend it doesn't exist. Now the story here might be that Jeff cheated to win because he's on a losing streak and he's looking to get back to his winning ways. Which, if that's the story, what a fucking terrible babyface that he has to resort to cheating to win any of his matches. What a terrible role model this guy is. But that's not even the point. And this is what the bots don't understand. It doesn't matter if Karrion Cross comes back this week and destroys Jeff Hardy. I expect him to. These two are probably going to have... They're probably going to work together for the next three months. And they're going to have a SummerSlam match. Karrion Cross is probably going to win. That's not the point. You just pinned your undefeated NXT champion in less than two minutes in his very first match. A man who has laid waste to every big name on the NXT brand now for the past several months. Nobody could beat this guy. This guy was unstoppable. 
He was in a match with four other people and beat them all at the last takeover. He beat everybody to the point where they had no challengers left for him. They had to put Samoa Joe back in the rain just to give him someone to work with. But hey, Jeff Hardy got his theme song back, everybody. Yay! Jeff got his theme song back. No more words. No more words, everybody. No fucking brains either. All of these people. That's seriously your biggest takeaway from that segment on Monday is that Jeff Hardy got his theme music back. Jeff Hardy's theme music is your biggest takeaway from that. Fuck Jeff Hardy's theme music. And I happen to like his music. But fuck it. Then I have to see people like Peter Rosenberg defend this shit. Oh, cross losing was interesting. Oh my god. The fact that they sent him out there with the NXT championship strapped around his waist is what really made this so terrible. That's what bothered me the most about what they did. We already know Vince McMahon doesn't care about NXT. He's called up a bunch of women recently from NXT, like Tony Storm and Tegan Knox and Shotzi Blackheart out of, out of necessity because they had no women. I've been saying this for months. They had no choice. I've been begging them to bring up some new faces in the women's division on both shows. But do you honestly think that Vince McMahon gives a squat rack shit about NXT? Of course not. He couldn't care any less than he does about who the champion is, or who's over, who's not over, how long Adam Cole has been the champion for, what Hit Row is. Good luck explaining BFAB to Vince McMahon. He doesn't care. And the NXT crew got hit in the face with a harsh reality this week. For a few years now, especially after NXT moved off the network and they expanded to two hours on USA, we have heard Paul Levesque and others refer to NXT not as developmental anymore. They were very adamant about this. No longer is NXT developmental. It is on the same plane now with Raw and SmackDown. Right? It's, it's, it's WWE's third brand. How many times have we heard this? They saw NXT as being on the same level now as Raw and SmackDown especially with NXT airing on the same network as Monday Night Raw. They even gave NXT the win in the battle for the brand supremacy at Survivor Series back in 2019 to try to boost interest in the product because they had just started up head-to-head -head with AEW on Wednesdays. But this was the week where a cold, harsh reality smacked the NXT roster and NXT management right in the face. NXT is not the third brand. NXT is the third-rate brand. That is how Vince McMahon sees it. And I know that the NXT talents don't want to hear that. The Adam Coles and the Johnny Garganos who have spent years down there carrying NXT on their backs. They don't want to hear that. But it's the truth. And they need to hear it. After he lost, Cross stood in the ring. He was interviewed. He said, Jeff Hardy just made the biggest mistake of his life. So, Jeff's got a beating coming his way. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll even smarten up, and they'll put Scarlet back with him soon. But that is not how you debut your NXT champion. You want to see a good example of how you debut your NXT champion on Raw? Look at what they did with Kevin Owens six years ago. He stepped right up to John Cena. He left him laying. And then in his very first match at Elimination Chamber, he pinned John Cena clean in the middle of the ring. So right out of the gate, they established Kevin Owens as somebody that you should take seriously. They paid great respect to the NXT Championship with how they booked that whole thing when Kevin Owens was called up. Even though he, he lost the second match to Cena, I think the second and the third. But that's fine, because... He established on day one that he could hang with John Cena. He did NXT proud. And they make it so hard to invest in the characters that we see on Tuesdays when you have very little confidence that any of it is going to matter once they get called up. I wish there was more continuity. I wish they showed more respect for the brand and for the fans of that brand. Because you got at least 700,000 of them that have been watching that show now the past few weeks on TV. We had reports out of the CWC this week that during the taping for next week's NXT show, since the next two weeks are taped, uh, thanks to the Olympics, 
The NXT champion was showered by Jeff Hardy chants during a promo that he was cutting on Samoa Joe. And it was bad enough that they felt it ruined the segment enough that they had to reshoot it at the end of the night. Great job. Great job. The fact that they're doing cross against Joe at this take as the next takeover main event next month makes the way he lost on this show even more baffling. Until you realize and you learn to accept that they don't care. And that's the great takeaway from this week.